Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and today we'll be covering a simple base guide to creating Signalis mods. It is easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer prospect of writing or creating your own mod, however I hope this guide will at least make things a bit simpler for y'all. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So modding can be intimidating at first, but follow the simple guide and you'll be able to create your own mods for Signalis. First up, you're going to need to download Melon Loader. This is what Unoff and VSL, so really the majority of the Signalis modding community, use to load and create their mods. When installing it, you're going to want to use the automatic installer. To use the automatic installer, download it from their website and then navigate to the executable of Signalis and you're going to want to select it. This is going to set up Melon Loader for Signalis and allow further action. This will, in the process, create a mods folder, as well as any other folders that you're going to need. If you're only using mods, then this is all you're going to need. However, this guide is for creating your own mods, so you're going to need a bit more. So next up, you're going to need to download Visual Studio Community. This software will allow you to write C-sharp code that can be read and executed by Melanoiter. So run the installer for the 2022 version of this software, and you're going to need to, while doing the setup and the installer, select the .NET Desktop Development and Game Development with Unity protocols. These are all you really need when coding Signalis mods, but there are other things you can install here if you so desire or know how to code in different coding languages. When the installer is finished, you're going to want to open it and create a new project. For your application, you're going to need a specific type of project. This type is a class library, or a .NET framework. To find it, just search class library on the search bar and make sure to select the one with the .NET framework, or else this is just not going to work. Then, name your project whatever it is you wish for your project, what you're working on. But make sure you do not put spaces in the name or else you're going to find some issues later on. Also, pick the latest.net framework version and we can get started on setting up this new project. To do that, we're going to need to import some reference files. Navigating to the reference tab on the side of the navigation bar and clicking on it, you can click add reference. Click browse and then navigate to your Signalis game folder. Open the Melon Loader folder within it and add the melonloader.dll. Then open the Manage folder and add the following files. assemblyc-sharp.dll, um, ii2cppm score library.dll, unhollower base library.dll, unitycmodule.dll, unityengine.coremodule.dll, and unityengine.dll. With these references set up, you're going to want to navigate to where on the side it says class1.cs, and you're going to want to right click it. Proceed to rename it to whatever it is you wish to call your mod, but it is helpful if it is not the same name as your file, and much like with the name of your file, no spaces. When a screen shows up asking if you'd like to rename all references, be sure to hit yes every time. Trust me, it'll make life a lot easier. Now we got to set up some basic code. To do this, click on the assemblyinfo.cs file and type in the following code. Using melon loader, semicolon, using my project, semicolon, assembly.melonloaderinfo, parentheses, type of my mod, parentheses, quotations, my mod name, quotations, comma, quotation, version, quotation, comma, quotation, author name, quotation, assembly, melon game. I have it on the screen. I tried to read it out, but just try to make sure it's input as it says on the screen. You can now edit the details within these quotation marks regarding your mod's name, version, and your name. You're not going to want to really leave my mod name, version, and author name on your file. Next, switch out my project to instead say the name of your namespace. If you do not know what your namespace is, this is usually your file name, but you can find it if you go back to where your class is and it's going to be clearly stated at the top of your class. Also, switch out my mod to the name of your class. Then going back to your class, put colon melon mod next to it. This is going to make it so it actually loads into the game and works. And that's all the basic steps to begin creating a mod. From here, you can do anything that you know how to code. Uh, a big suggestion would be that is very much popular in the community is installing Unity Explorer. This mod allows you to see how Signalis works, similar to how Unity Engine works, and is vital for crafting codes to make the mods you so want. 
Installing is rather simple. Go to its download GitHub and download the .zip file. Extract the libraries within your user library folder and the mod folder into the mod folder. Um, but regarding creating your own mods, if there's any questions that you ever have and you're not a huge coder, there are tons of free, great free online resources that can help you out. Um, if you really want to just jump into the frying pan, you can use things like ChatGPT to greatly help with the code production. It's not going to be able to write you perfect code. You're going to need to understand and play around with it and do debug, but it can greatly help for someone who is new. Or if you want to ask any questions, uh, you can always come to VSL or on off. Both servers are very receptive to helping people with mods. Um, I also plan in the future on releasing some more code guides if this is something we want as well as future mods that are just going to do most of the coding work for you. So that way it just makes this entire process easier. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like my videos, feel free to subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And if you'd like to talk to me or any Citadelist fans about the game, theories, lore, or even modding, I have a link to my Discord VSL below. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.